Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our devotion this morning. Uh, we are looking at this wonderful book of Habakkuk, and uh, we've been looking at uh, the predicament that Habakkuk found himself in, uh, trying to intervene and intercede on behalf of Judah, and how he sends God's silence. And secondly, when God does respond in those verses 5 to 11, it's a response he didn't really want to hear because God says that he's going to use their enemy Babylon to overthrow them, to conquer them, to take them into captivity. And we spoke about how the question of Habakkuk changes from why, Lord, are you silent, to how can you use our enemy to overthrow us? Uh, what's the purpose of that? And uh, we said that when we find ourselves in a similar place that we are to do three things. First of all, we are to recall the promises of God, which Habakkuk does in those opening verses. Then secondly, to dwell on the character of God. And of course, Habakkuk speaks of God as being holy, God being eternal, God being pure and mighty and so on. Uh, and then thirdly, that we need to vent. We need to be able to you know, openly share our burdens with God and our frustrations with God, which is exactly what he does. And um, so this morning we're going to look at the fourth one, which is really getting to that place where, you know, you just kind of reconcile yourself to the fact that God is in control, that all of the things you've now declared about God, his promises, his character, and so on, he knows what your, your thoughts and your concerns are. And now you're in a place to wait for him to, to answer. Uh, and we saw a couple of weeks ago what Habakkuk's name means, to embrace or to wrestle, which is what Habakkuk finds himself doing. Uh, to the believer who will continue to embrace God, even though things may not get any better at first, this person inevitably will grow closer to God than they ever were before. In fact, if you look very closely at those who are closest to God, they are often those who have been through the most difficult times and God has proven himself faithful. The opening verse of chapter 2 tells us three specific things to do when you find yourself in a crisis of faith. When you're struggling and you know that God could do something but he's not and he doesn't seem, things just don't seem to be fair, life doesn't seem to be fair. Uh, it doesn't make sense and you're wondering, Lord, where are you? You know, why aren't you acting? Why aren't you intervening? So the first thing that Habakkuk does, and again, it's all about what he does and what we ought to do, because we find ourselves in similar situations, is to stop and to listen. So Habakkuk up to now has said, Lord, I, I don't know, I don't like what you're doing. You know, I've stated my case. Now it's your turn to reply. It's a very similar kind of a narrative that we find in Job, isn't it? Uh, I need some answers. God, what have you got to say for yourself? And then in verse 1, we read, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. In other words, I'm going to climb up on the wall and I'm going to look, you know, to, to, to see what God is doing. You know, almost like standing on the wall to see what God is doing is going to help. And he says this, I will look to see what God will say. And that's a different thing. If we really listen, uh, we will hear God's voice. Maybe not audibly, although I know that can happen. But God usually speaks through his word. He often speaks to us through circumstances. And God speaks to us, of course, through other uh, godly people. And God often will speak to you. But... The thing is, we're not, we may not always like what he actually says to us. We may not always like what he, we sense that he is saying to us. And so the first thing to do is just to pause, to stop, and to listen. The second is a little bit more difficult. The second is to write it down. To write down what God is saying to you. And that's why journaling for many is so therapeutic number one but it's also helpful because you are pouring out your heart to God and you are putting on paper what God is saying to you as well as what you're saying to God 
So Habakkuk says, Lord, where are you? You know, what's going on? And God says, you want to know? And Habakkuk starts taking notes, you know. Okay, I want to know. This is what God says in verse 2. The Lord replied, Habakkuk, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. So why does God want him to write it down? Maybe so that years later, when God has been true to his promises, he wanted it in writing so everyone could see that he is a God of his word, a God of his promise. But more important, it was for his benefit too. It would be a reminder to him of God's faithfulness. Any, you know, how often do we, especially as guys, you know, are sent off to to do some shopping or buy certain items at the grocery store or whatever. And, um, you know, and we forget what those items were. Invariably, we come back with a whole lot of items missing. I think it's important that when God speaks to us and God speaks to us about various items in our lives, we ought to make a note of it and record it. Because our spiritual enemy is an expert in stealing God's word, stealing the seeds of truth that God has planted in our hearts. And so when we write it down, it's great to go back and to see how God spoke to us and how we spoke to God and, and, and how we, we, we can kind of measure how we are growing. And so stop and, and listen, then write the revelation down. Write down what God is saying to you. It's, it's a really good exercise to journal. Buy yourself a journal and start writing things down that God is speaking to you from His Word. And then thirdly, and I guess the one that we find the most difficult, be patient. Verse 3, be patient. And we read, for the revelation awaits an appointed time speaks of the end and will not prove false though it linger wait for it it'll certainly come and will not delay when god promises something you may have to wait a while but you can take his promises to the bank and i guess there are some of you who are listening to this or watching this this morning and you find yourself in this kind of waiting zone what I often call the nowhere between two somewheres. You believe God has shown you something, you've recorded it, and now you're waiting and you're waiting and you're afraid that it won't come to pass. Remember this, God's delays are not God's denials. When God has promised something, it'll come to pass. The scriptures are just full of examples of those who waited on the Lord and God responded in his time. And I always loved that little chorus that we used to sing as when we were much younger and children sing it even today. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful <clears throat> in his time. Think of Moses, think of Joseph. And we've looked at all of these characters. We've looked at Paul. Remember Paul, um, when we were looking at prayer, I think it was back in December, um, and we ask the question, what do you do when God says no? Or God, he sends God saying no. Um, and I really encourage you to look back at those devotions that we did on prayer to remind us what Paul did in the circumstances. When we read in three different seasons of life, he pleaded with God to remove the thorn, and yet God seemed silent. And ultimately God responded and said, my grace is sufficient for you. And we spoke at length about what that really means. And so maybe you're in a place, a waiting place, where you're seriously wondering if God still remembers you, whether God answers prayer at all. And so I just want to encourage you again to stop and to listen. And then secondly, to, to write down God's revelation. Write down His Word. Write down what you sense He's saying to you. Because in due course, you'll look back and say, I know that what happened was for my good and that God has been faithful. But most of all, to be patient, to really just hang in, to be patient and know that, that God's timing is not our timing. And that's the hardest lesson of all. And so don't make the mistake of mistaking God's silence for his absence. Uh, I think the psalmist said, and we looked at this probably a year ago, you know, that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. 
he's not absent he's actually there that sometimes as I've also said before he's more interested in our character than our comfort and sometimes we go through things and he wants us to learn patience to wait on him for the right time when he will act and so let's turn to the Lord in a moment of prayer as we as we just ponder on these things Lord we find it so difficult to wait we live in a world where waiting sometimes is not an option we we have to wait forcibly for so many things in life for especially those things that we we need like licenses and certificates and various things from government institutions that seem to just take so long and we struggle to wait, Lord. We struggle when we've got to wait for visas and passports and so on. We struggle when we've got to wait in traffic. We struggle when we've got to wait in long queues. Uh, we live in this, this world that is just instant. We, we want everything instantly because when we're on our, our laptops and our phones, they, we have instant access. We can access whatever we want when we want. And I guess we take that same mindset into your dealings with us, Lord. We want you to act immediately. We are not prepared to wait for you. And yet Habakkuk just reminds us of the importance of just pausing and listening. The importance of journaling and writing things down. In maybe even a prayer journal, the things that you say to us. And, and so that in due course we can come back to that and, and see how you how you intervene, how you responded, that you, in fact, were never absence, absent um, just because you seemed silent. And so we pray that we may be patient. We pray that we may wait upon the Lord. We think of those verses in Isaiah 40, wait upon the Lord, that we shall the, wait on the Lord and we'll mount up on the wings of eagles. Lord, may we wait on you. May we rest in you and trust you for our lives and everything that you provide in our lives. And so continue to speak to us through this book, Lord, and may we just learn to, to stop, listen, write, and wait in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon.